Okay, back again. And here we have the model that I was showing last time with the uh, joint in place um, and the, uh, the necessary bodies. So we need to create some muscles. Um, I'm going to create a flexor and extensor muscle because the muscles actually perform the experiment. So if you only create a flexor, then it will only go to the full range of flexion because muscles don't push. So you want to create these in pairs. Obviously, if you've got a complete model, you'll have everything in place. But we'll start with them um, putting these in, in, in pairs. And to make it work, obviously, um, we need to decide on the muscles we want. So we're going to start with um, a thing called iliacus, which runs from the iliac crest up here um, and inserts uh, into the uh, greater tuberosity region around here. And it's quite interesting because it, it, it passes over this part of the pelvis. So we can't put in just a simple muscle here because if we do, it'll probably actually just go through the blade of the pelvis. And to make that work, uh, we can use what's called a via point. So we can define the origin of the muscle, we can define a point that it must run through on its course, and then an insertion. And in fact, we can create as many via points as we want, and sometimes for complicated muscles, we will need to. You have to be careful with via points, though, because they can have slightly unexpected side effects, which, which you might not want. Um, they can cause muscles to move in very odd directions at extremes of, of uh, range of motion. And they're best used for situations where you have things like retinacular, where the muscle is actually firmly tied down to a particular location, so that the via point is a, a reasonable option. And there are alternatives, uh, such as wrapping operators, that you can use um, when you want to give the muscle a, the option of, of moving a bit more than that. Um, again, we always start by creating markers. So let's uh, create a marker and we'll call this um, left iliacus origin. Uh, it needs to be attached to the trunk. Uh, orientation is irrelevant for muscle marker points. They don't, it doesn't make any difference. So we can create it and there it is. Uh, and then we can create the insertion um, down here. Uh, create marker. Insertion. And that's there. And as I say, I think a via point about here is necessary because otherwise it won't wrap around the, the brim of the pelvis like we wanted to. So uh, create marker. And this is um, left iliacus uh, via point. Call it via point one because you can have lots of via points. Uh, and this one is attached to the the trunk is attached to the pelvis. I think uh, I need to edit this because I don't think I remembered to, um, yeah, it's attached to the world. I don't want that. I want it attached to the thigh, otherwise it won't move the way I want it to. So those are my um, three markers that define the, um, the, the course of this muscle. And so I can now create the muscle, create muscle, Now, the type of muscle isn't really important for this experiment. Uh, Minetti Alexander muscles are suitable for things where you're not interested in high performance, so you don't need springs, um, and they're the, the default that you're, you're better off using. Um, and as I say, normally you'd worry about things like uh, physiological cross-section area or fiber length, because if you're looking at dynamic properties, you need to get those right. Since we're not, we're just looking at moment arms, we can leave them at their normal values. But obviously, if we needed to put real values in, these would be available, hopefully, from the literature, or you might have to do your own dissection. So this is left iliacus. Uh, its origin is um, left hip, no, 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 left iliacus origin. Its insertion is left iliacus insertion. And it's got a via point, so it's an endpoint strap. If it didn't have any via points, it'd have no via points, but it's got one via point, and we just mark the location uh, left iliacus via point. Torque reporter is an option that lets you calculate the torque applied by a muscle, and it can be quite useful um, in certain situations, but if we're doing tendon travel-based um, uh, moment arm calculations, we don't need it, um, although it is a way of calculating uh, moment arms because you can derive moment arms from the torques. And there it is. So this is the muscle, and you can see where it's, it, it's enforced that it moves 
um, through this. Uh, and you can see that you know, if this extended, if we didn't have this via point, then the muscle path would run through the bone, which you know, obviously it can't. Um, but you, as you can imagine, it will allow um, flexion perfectly well, may cause some slightly unrealistic problems but in fact it is fairly closely tied down by fascia in this area so it's probably not an unreasonable approximation and we're modeling here so everything is a little bit of an approximation so let's just save that and let's flip around and look at it from the back so that's our, our flexor so let's stick in um, an extensor let's stick in um, something like uh, gluteus maximus now gluteus maximus it's tricky because it's a fan-shaped muscle and so you have to decide what you're going to do about that. Um, obviously you can treat um, the origin um, as a, a single point to make it a point-to-point -point muscle and, and probably that's fine depending on what you want to do. But you might have to subdivide it into three or five or seven or you know a hundred, it that doesn't really matter, um, individual uh, muscle fibers um, and you could model each one separately. I mean Gates him perfectly happy having having lots and lots of muscles. Obviously if you're going to do lots and lots you're probably going to have to write yourself a Python script to, to generate them or something otherwise you'll go completely insane sort of putting them in but certainly putting in uh you know a dozen or so uh, individual things would be perfectly reasonable and actually possibly very necessary to model it properly but for the purposes of this as is quite commonly we're just going to pick a sort of nominal um origin point and we're going to insert it into the um uh into the uh, femur now the thing about this, um, again, is is this will cause problems because if you think about it, it's going to run from roughly about here and it's going to insert roughly about here. And um, you are going to get issues of um, occlusion at certain parts. And obviously um, there are things that we can do to make this occlusion better. Uh, in this case, I think just sticking a via point here it might work um, yeah it might work it might work reasonably well if we think what's going to happen um, particularly because um, this is um, relatively close to the to the head um, but I just want to use it as a way of demonstrating one of the other features that we've got so this is a little bit artificial um, but one of the things often very useful for extensor muscles when you've got large range of motion is to get them to wrap around an object and the um, the wrapping options in, in uh, gate sim are the moment cylinders so you create these sort of infinite cylinders that you can wrap around um, so we will use one of those just to illustrate the the feature you could decide whether that was actually specifically what you wanted to to do and that's an anatomy decision rather than a, a modeling decision but if I um, decide to make this a cylinder wrap muscle then it still needs an origin so uh, we create a marker for the origin so we'll call this um, left gluteus maximus origin uh, um, this time we remember to put it on the on the trunk uh, and then we're going to insert it. Well, because we're going to do this slightly artificial thing um, and the insertion of gluteus maximus is a bit all over the place anyway, I'm going to stick it down here. Um, it's, it's not necessarily quite the right place, but um, it'll be useful for demonstrating what I want to do. So this is left gluteus maximus insertion. And this is attached to the thigh. Now, if we're putting a muscle around a cylinder, we have to define the axis and radius of the cylinder. And guess what? We do that with a marker. And actually what I'm going to do for this is it's often quite a useful thing is I'm going to put the cylinder actually around um, the axis of the joint. Um, definitely useful in some situations, possibly not right here. Um, but I don't want to do it by using the same marker. I could, um, but that restricts your, your flexibility and it's actually much better um, to duplicate the marker. So we can do that exactly as we did before. Create marker and this is the uh, left gluteus maximus cylinder, cylinder marker. 
um, and we're going to attach it to the uh, to the thigh, um, and we're actually going to copy it from the um, hip joint marker. So we can copy the marker, put it in the position there. It also copies the orientation of the marker. So we now have this extra marker that we can use for wrapping around this cylinder. So now when we do create muscle, um, so this is left gluteus maximus. It's got an origin, left gluteus maximus origin. It's got an insertion, gluteus maximus insertion. It's going to be a cylinder marker and it's got a cylinder uh, wrap left gluteus maximus cylinder marker and cylinder radius at the moment that would be a meter that seems excessive um, let's go down to three centimeters that might it's a guess what you would normally do is you would actually measure off the bones uh, to give you an idea of what a, a, a typical um, thing would be you also have to remember when you're wrapping cylinders you're almost defining the um, the moment arm you're going to get. You're certainly defining the minimum of the moment arm to an extent. Um, that's assuming that you've got a sort of um, path of the muscle that is um, perpendicular to the axis, which you don't necessarily have. Um, so it's still interesting, but you do have to be careful when you choose these radius. It does actually have to be biologically meaningful and should relate probably to some sort of bony feature in the model. And there we've got it. Now, you look at this and you think, that's a bit weird. And again, this is a great example of what's going on. So this is the muscle we've just created. And it has wrapped around the cylinder. Now, again, cylinders have a wrapping direction. And again, you can work it out by doing the right hand rule and bending your fingers around your thumb and all the rest. But in fact, it is easier simply to, um, to create it like we have and then just to edit it. So. Um, it's clearly pointing the wrong direction. So um, if I um, find the marker that it's wrapping around, this is the marker here, maximum cylinder marker, I can edit it and I can reverse its direction. So this is wrapping around the z-axis 90 degrees. If I wrap it around the z-axis minus 90 degrees, then the axis arrow is gonna point in exactly the opposite direction and the wrapping is now correct. So now it's wrapping around this missing all the muscle and it's pretty convincing actually you know it's it's avoiding the head you can absolutely imagine that's not an unreasonable place that this path would wrap the nice thing about cylinder wrapping is that um, it only wraps when it has to wrap so so if you're in a situation where the uh, the path would completely miss the wrapping object then you don't get wrapping um, so it's it's really nice it's very flexible it's very numerically stable and it's actually very easy to calculate so i do like using them um, i might actually even be tempted to replace this marker here with a with a cylinder that goes along the edge um, of this of this bone because it will probably behave itself better. But it, it does depend. It depends on the anatomy of the structures um, and what you're trying to do. And of course, it's a, it's a biological decision, not a not a modeling decision. OK, so I'm going to got the muscles there. I've got the joints there. Um, I'm going to leave it now. And in the next time, I'll show you how to um, actually make the model move and how to get the data out.